was from One World South Asia, director of One World South Asia, uh, Mrs. Ethel Oran, who is the director of the Finnish Center for Development of the Development for Culture and Education, and Mr. Sandy Bartava, who is the uh, head of corporate relations of uh, Nokia Siemens Network. Networks uh, Asia Pacific. Uh, the, the, the theme, as I said, uh, uh, capacity building for Web uh, 2.0, and the question is very simple. We talk about next billion internet users, is one of the main themes of RTF this time. And uh, the question is what else, apart from technical? is needed so that uh, those billion people could actually uh, utilize the access to the internet, uh, not on the level of 0, .0 or 1.0. But uh, so we start with the element, and we start from uh, something that is quite basic, I, I guess, to all of this. That is to say, media literature. And, and especially media literature, uh, literacy, uh, media literacy for interactive media. Please. They are parents, grandparents, teachers, maybe nannies, and who are the people in this modern world who don't know nothing about Web 2.0? They are the same people. They don't know much about the internet and the content too. Maybe they use email and something, but they don't really know what is internet. That's the, my main point. Media literacy is the process of accessing, analyzing, evaluating, and creating messages in wide variety of media modes and forms how to prepare children and adults for reading and learning in a media society. I do not have many answers, but many questions. We have challenges. The next generation with very different learning experiences, informal learning, learning from each other, learning from media, different media, and learning in a virtual community. Different kind of uh, concept of learning process is changing. It's really changing the whole process, and we must understand that. These next gen generation people, they are not the same people what we are. And we, are, we really must think what are the real process. And um, how about teachers? Their skills. Is the skills, these skills nowadays, what they have to be? The teachers are not only distributors of information and knowledge. They should have skills to share information and knowledge, utilizing new learning tools. I would like to have the teachers in the second class to be with the students so that they are together producing their those things what they are studying. Maybe ships, maybe cars, maybe some clothes, maybe something else. But they are together at second class and doing it there. That's my vision about the learning. But teachers should have skills and right attitude to create knowledge together with the students. We have more opportunities to learn and work in different types of virtual communities. We have more tools for sharing of knowledge. We have more opportunities to learn from each other in global platforms. Are we using it? Are we really using it? 
We have more opportunities to create cross-cultural communities and learn from different cultures and societies, to build a real, real virtual global knowledge society. How are we doing? Utilizing wiki blog, different kind of web communities for learning. What are the skills expected from teachers and students? We need good media skills, cross media skills, communication skills, teamwork skills, cross cultural communication skills. We or adults should have skills to guide children and youngsters to utilize these new tools and communicate, communicate it in the right way and find the right thing. Thank you. Thank you, Yusuf. Likely, uh, most of that will be Charlie Young. So, thank you very much. And uh, we, uh, I, I then would like to ask the Sunday Five Hour. Uh, well, actually, let's have all the panelists here. Uh, we don't want to be behind that uh, desk, but rather a little bit closer, closer to you. Um, so, uh, I'd like to ask Mr. Sunday Five Hour. Uh, to uh, present his vision of the capacity building for Web 2.0. Thank you, that's really important. So we, uh, from the technological perspective, what we feel today is that if, if we are able to build capacities with the students who are visiting out of the schools or entering to the college domain, giving them more technological opportunities to serve the community or to take that as a profession or as an entrepreneur is the best way to handle the situation. In that situation, one is that we also uh, uh, train, train the teachers in the process. So we at uh, the company which I represent have brought out uh, some of our programs which target some of our corporate social responsibility job also, which are designated as like Break the Gap. This is a school which is, which is there to establish more of apprenticeship and skills enhancement programs in the students who are coming out of their 10th class or 12th class, but definitely uh, a couple of them don't have the opportunity go for higher studies. So that's where we are building and trying to build more skills on, on different uh, skill sets, like pipeline tuning, nutrition part of it, which can really contribute to the, the capacities uh, which are needed in the future, especially in the developing countries where we have a lot of potential to go into the rural areas, where we need to put our services in the rural areas. We are always fighting about the internet and the telecom penetration into the rural areas. I think these kind of capacities will help us to really maintain and serve uh, the, the new technologies which are getting in there. We have run uh, programs in Philippines where we have the teachers and, and uh, the adults taking the advantage of these kind of programs where apart from the school time, they were involved and they were brought in. And they have been uh, giving, uh, given education and skill sets to really help out the community. So our, our thought process, especially my thought process into this uh, is, is we have to uh, build up a, a capacity where, where we, we teach them, we uh, make them entrepreneurs because Making them an entrepreneur will also uh, bring them to a place where they can earn their own livelihood. So another important aspect for the internet, uh, like not being successful, is that they, they don't know that if they are getting involved into the whole system. Like 70% in India and, and most of the developing countries, are, it's mostly uh, due to the agricultural sector. So if you are able to provide them an opportunity to learn uh, while they are working or something which you can uh, disseminate while they are working, I think they get more involved about this. So for example, we that case, the mobility devices and other devices are going to come very handy. So while he's working, he's doing his agriculture farming. If he's able to get his tutoring lessons on the, on the mobile handset or any other device, it's more, more beneficial for them. So these kind of uh, programs, which definitely uh, adds up to, to build, build their skills and knowledge, as well as to, to make them more literate, will benefit a lot. So our parent company, Nokia, is unleashing programs specifically for the Indian domain, where, where we have the agricultural updates the general knowledge upgrades are right on the handset. So while somebody is doing a farming, he gets his updates on the, on the mobile handset. Also, there is a lot of uh, the, the uh, entertainment aspects being downloaded over there. So uh, from the technical perspective, or from the technological perspective, I think uh, definitely we have an edge and we have a lot of, lot of things to do to, to build this potential, build this capacity to serve the future, to come back to us and involve them in, in the kind of, uh, say for example, the application skills or application software which is required for the internet to run, 
involve them to build that kind of a software to give back to us, and that's where their involvement happens. So it's a two-way approach. You reach them to the technology, involve them in contributing to the technology, and they will give back to you. It's not only young people, but actually also senior citizens, elderly, who uh, uh, are a, an issue for capacity building and, and for, for, for internet and, and the web 2.0. And I think this is one of the issues that... As you probably all know, Finnish people are, are one of... Uh, or Finland is one of the mo most leading countries in, in, in the world. Uh, in the use of internet, 83 uh, percent of Finnish people use internet daily, and uh, uh, even uh, of our children, over 90 percent uh, use in internet uh, regularly. And people who don't use internet so much in Finland are older people. Over uh, 10 or uh, 11 percent of our elderly people are familiar with the use of internet as a hub computer in their home. And in the situation, the question that is heard in Finland uh, is nowadays uh, not so often how to get uh, people connected with internet, but uh, how to get our children away from internet. And uh, people uh, discuss very much uh, of, uh, of the fact that <coughs> in school uh, children uh, uh, spend uh, several day, uh, hours a day after school in net. And uh, during uh, last year, we have had in uh, Finland two uh, school shooting in incidents. And uh, what is common in both these incidents was that uh, the shooter was uh, teased or bullied both, both at uh, school and at the in internet uh, in different, different ways. And since uh, uh, the question has long, long been how to make uh, the use of the web more secure and more trustful for children in Finland, these two incidents have uh, uh, made us to ask what would be the different ways to uh, learn children to use and confront internet uh, environment in a way uh, where they would, uh, well, obey the rules that uh, go also in, in their normal life. Because as you know, it's uh, more easy to, to tease the other in the web where you can do it anonymously and etc. And now we have in Finland a uh, 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 sort of a, a campaign in our schools where we use a, a play, which is played in internet, where children have to identify both with a person who is teased and uh, both this teased uh, person who are making harm to, to uh, other children, both in internet and in, in real life situation, or not real life, but uh, in offline situations. And uh, the results of this uh, program or this campaign have been very, very, Schools in uh, most most schools where this uh, this program has been tested, uh, teasing has uh, come down, and we are intending to have this program in all, in all schools in, in Finland during the next year. Well, I have myself uh, two children. Uh, the other who is uh, nine years old, and the other is twelve, and they both are very professional in the uh, web. Uh, they, they use web uh, every day and uh, go to different social media pages and etc. And what has been very uh, nice is that uh, my my son, who is 12 years old, has uh, uh, taught my own mother, who is uh, about 17 years old, to use internet. We bought a computer out to my mother, and now my mother who lives in the countryside, and my son, we live in Helsinki, in the capital of uh, Finland. My mother and my, my son, uh, almost every day they chat in the internet 
and uh, my mother who has a Skype also, can be in contact with uh, her relatives uh, with, uh, in the third standard almost. And this is a, uh, I think this is a good example that, uh, of uh, how it doesn't require, require so much of uh, people to use internet if, if they want to, if they have a good motivation. And more, uh, for my mother, the motivation is to be in contact with, with uh, uh, his, uh, her relatives. And, uh, well, I think that uh, what should be done is uh, what Epi, that Epi uh, raised the question uh, that uh, the problem is that uh, the persons who uh, nurse our, our children, mummies, uh, etc., don't know the internet, don't know what uh, children are doing there. But in my family, this is a good, good example of how <coughs> children have taught uh, their grandmother uh, how to use the computer, what they can do there, and they are in what contact with each, each other. And I think this is such a good example of how well, it could be done. Yeah. It's based on social interaction of people. And uh, this is a good example of how internet has evolved over the years. Even the word internet has changed its meaning. It started, let's say, internet 0.9 was a network of computers. Even technically, we still mean that the internet is a network of computers that are connected to each other. But quite soon thereafter, people started to talk, talk about the network of information. So talk about uh, information, for example, web pages that were connected to each other, of FT information on FTP servers that was connected to each other. And so the, the meaning of in internet started to mean not the computers, but the content of those computers. But recently, during the last couple of years, even that has changed. And we are now talking to the network of people when we talk about internet. Because uh, now, nowadays, nobody actually thinks about technology back behind there, except for the masters of science and engineering who make, make certain that the technology works behind there. But when they go to internet, as, as we nowadays say, we talk about the people we meet there. We talk about the uh, societies we have formed there. We talk about those organizations and networks we have created with people, not only in our immediate surroundings, but around the world. So when we talk about capacity for 22.0, I think we should focus on social capital. And with social capital, I mean a little bit wider set of competencies uh, than Epi told here. We, uh, Epi focused on media literacy, but she was also hinting about the communication skills. And I think with social, with social Capital 2.0, it means these social skills and social uh, readiness and uh, social networks that are required in the web so that you can work properly in the web, you still can have social relationships in the web. Even people are even having marriages in the web nowadays. And sometimes it's uh, very difficult for your husband or your wife to understand that in second life you have another husband. <laughs> but uh, this all, of course, has led us to this generation gap. We have actually discussed quite a lot here during the last few days because this uh, new social capital has been formed spontaneously by our children, by teenagers. Now we have uh, the first of these people are emerging to the work market, <coughs> people who are native to internet, who have been born to internet, whose nation states a native state is not Finland or India, but the web. Because uh, I, ob I observed this when I was, uh, my son was born, it's, it was 14 years ago, and I when came back from the hospital. The first thing I did, I actually connected to the web and started playing an internet game I had been playing during my wife's pregnancy. Because I had been telling those bug gaming buddies there how the pregnancy was going and uh, how my wife was doing that I'm, I may not be here next night because I may be in the hospital with my wife. So when I got back, 
Ahí, el lockdown, han todos 